Hello there. My name is Patrick Radden Keefe. I'm an author and a journalist with The New Yorker magazine, and I live in New York. And I have some questions here in the form of a short interview that I have been asked to conduct with myself. <clears throat> so, first question here is, what is the difference between the words and writings of a journalist and those of a writer? I don't know that I make a strong distinction myself. I try to write uh, in a literary fashion, even though the stories that I tell are true. And that would be true uh, in the long articles that I write in The New Yorker and also in my books. Next question is, what was the starting point for writing your latest book? So my latest book, which isn't out in French yet, but is called Rogues, is a collection of 12 stories that I've published in The New Yorker magazine over the course of the last 15 or so years, mostly about people behaving badly. And the book before that, Empire of Pain, which is just now coming out in French, uh, is about the Sackler family, a very wealthy family, one of the richest families in the world that was known until recently primarily for their generosity. They gave a lot of money to the arts and the sciences, and you would often see their names uh, etched into the walls of famous institutions like the Louvre in Paris, like the British Museum, like the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And the starting point for the book was when I realized that the family had made most of its fortune on the sale of OxyContin, an opioid drug that is quite addictive and helped give rise to a terrible public health crisis in the United States, the opioid crisis. Next question, to what extent were you involved in the TV series project Painkiller? which is uh, in development by Netflix and is partly based on your work. I'm an executive producer on the series, Painkiller. Uh, it's directed by Peter Berg. I was not one of the writers, and it's based on a book by Barry Meyer called Painkiller, but also on an article of mine in The New Yorker about the Sacklers. So it relates to my work in, in Empire of Pain. So I've been an executive producer. I've visited the set and read the scripts and spoken with the actors, including Matthew Broderick, who plays Richard Sackler. Uh, in the series. So that's been a fun experience for me. And that should be out, I think, uh, if not later this year, then early next year. What was the most difficult write-up in your career and why? I wrote a story for The New Yorker some years ago that was included um, in my book Rogues about a woman named Judy Clark, who is a death penalty lawyer. She represents what are known as the worst of the worst. Her clients have done terrible things, but she fights to save their lives, arguing that even the worst among us, people who've done horrific things, should not be put to death by the state. And for that story, I spent a lot of time in a trial, a criminal trial of a young man named Jahar Sarnayev, Jokar Sarnayev, who was the Boston Marathon bomber. He bombed the Boston Marathon. And I grew up in Boston. And sitting in on the trial, I witnessed terrible testimony from people who were victims of that terrible crime. And yet, as I watched the trial, I also became convinced that this man's life should be spared, that the state should not execute him despite the horrors of what he did. Um, are libraries a place where you frequently find resources? Yes, I spend a lot of time in libraries. I use the books. I use old documents in uh, special collections in archives. I get letters for Empire of Pain. I think there were a dozen different archives where I got family letters and other archival materials that I drew on. So I spent a lot of time in libraries. I love libraries. I write in libraries um, and also use them as a resource in my research. Because of libraries, are people buying your books less or are people reading your books more? Um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Certainly a lot of people read my books uh, from the library, and it's always nice. I get notes because uh, often with these recent books, there will be a, a wait to get the book at the library, and people will send me notes when, they, when their name comes off the list and they, they get a hold of their copy. I'm a big believer in libraries, and so uh, I'm very happy as an author for people to read my book in, in any way that they can reach it, whether they, they buy the physical book, whether they read it on a tablet, whether they listen to the audio book, uh, which I do the narration for, um, or if they get it at the library. Um, <laughs> 
Since the Cold War has started again between the East and the West, is it possible that the CIA might write a new Wind of Change song for the German band The Scorpions in order to stop the war in Ukraine? It's funny that I would get this question. I just went to a Scorpions concert um, in New York. They played New York just the other night, and I went. I made this podcast about The Scorpions and this song called Wind of Change, and it was fascinating because obviously the, the context has changed dramatically. The last time I saw the Scorpions play was in Kyiv uh, in 2019. And so it's astonishing to think now that the meaning of that song and the end of the Cold War obviously has a new currency for people living in U Ukraine. Um, there was an, a, a whistleblower, a Russian government whistleblower who has a, a Twitter handle, an anonymous Twitter account sharing information that's critical of the Russian army and the Russian state. And the handle of the Twitter account, the nickname, is Wind of Change. So um, it is interesting to me, having made that podcast, to see the way in which some of the messages and the themes that we explored um, are newly relevant today in light of the terrible war in Ukraine. And, uh, <laughs> and the last question is, are you a CIA agent? Um, to which I can only answer, no, I'm not a CIA agent, but, but with the caveat that if I were a CIA agent, then of course, that's what I would tell you. Thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you in France. Bye-bye.